make welcome our host, Godman Akinlabi. Somebody ready for God today? Yeah. Are you blessed to be at Accelerate 2023? Yeah. Glory to Jesus. Lift those hands to Jesus all over this place and let's just bless him. Let's just appreciate him and thank him. Father, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank him for all the testimonies because it's the doer of everything. Is the doer of everything. Somebody just thank him and just bless him. He is the doer of everything. Testimonies of healings, supernatural provisions. Somebody is here trusting God for a, a home of your own. You want to own your own house. And you heard that, you heard that testimony. I need you to believe. There's nothing difficult for God to do. We've seen him do it over and again, over and again. Someone is here with pain in your body. We just heard a testimony of our sister. Jesus himself can operate on you without a doctor. Yeah. And he can take what is growing out of your body without a doctor. Glory to Jesus. Somebody's here trusting God for marital settlement. I need you to know. That God is interested in settling you maritally. And all kinds of things are happening here at Accelerate 2023. From this point to every experience center, God is moving. God is moving. Strange things are starting from tonight. And I need you to release your faith. One more time, lift your two hands to Jesus and say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Father, we honor you and we bless you for all the good things that you have done in the life of countless people. We thank you for the people who have shared their testimonies tonight. We thank you for many more people all around the world, people who have located to many places all around the world who participated in Accelerate 2022 and they had testimonies. We honor you for what you've done in their lives. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do and what you have started doing. Even from the pre-conference activities, from the prayers, the worship evening, for everything that you have done. We just want to celebrate you, Father. We just want to bless your name. We just want to bless your name. Wave those hands to him one more time all over this place and just bless him, just bless him, just bless him, just bless him. Father, we're grateful. Father, we're grateful. We're grateful. Take all the glory. Take all the glory. Everything belongs to you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about your mercy, your grace, your favor, and your mandate over this house. So we return all the glory to you. In the precious name of Jesus. Somebody who is blessed to be here, put your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Hallelujah. Please do it a little better. Celebrate Jesus tonight. And welcome to Accelerate 2023. Hallelujah. Please shake hands with one or two people as you have your seat and welcome them to Accelerate 2023. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Can you help me make welcome Pastor Yemi Davids? <laughs> Praise God. Who are you? Welcome. For everyone joining us online, I want us to take distractions away from you and get ready to be blessed. 
by God's word today. Uh, we believe that God who is right with us here is right with you, wherever you may be joining us from, everyone from every experience center uh, all around Lagos, from Greater Lekki to Ikoi to Maryland, Ikeja to Ikorodu, uh, everyone joining from the experience center from Abuja, everyone from London, England, from uh, Ontario, Canada, and everywhere that you're joining us from, whether at an experience center or you're just all by yourself enjoying any of our online platforms. I wanted to put distractions away from you. Get ready to be blessed uh, by the teaching and preaching of God's word as I bring us the first word at Accelerate 2023. Are you ready? Uh, I wanted to help, let me tell your neighbor, say you have the unusual edge. Tell somebody and say you have the unusual edge. Our theme for this year is the unusual edge. Skybound. Somebody, you are, you, are, you are stepping out of the ordinary, stepping out of the usual in the name of Jesus, the unusual edge. And I want to speak tonight as we start out, for somebody, this is going to be instructive, for some other person, this is going to be absolutely prophetic. For some other person, this word is going to, you know, push you into an encounter that will become consistent in your life. That's what God has, you know, showed me. As you listen, as you take your note, as you open your heart to, you know, to just listen to what I'm sharing tonight, it's going to come to us in different ways. For someone, like I said, you're going to get your instructions from here. For someone, it's going to be like your aha moment where you understand what is ahead of you in the seasons of your life. And for some of that persons, it's going to be absolutely prophetic because some words will come your way that will resonate that will shift you to your next level in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to start out from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. I'm speaking on vision, the unusual edge. Vision, the unusual edge. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, uh, there's, uh, an, there was an unusual occurrence, like what I believe would be the experience of somebody from Accelerate 2023. There was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that confirmed a prophecy of many years, which was the prophecy of Joel in Joel chapter 2. It's Joel said, it shall come to pass in that day that shall pour my spirit upon all flesh. And when that prophecy will come to pass, what Joel called the last days, uh, if Joel, the days of Peter, James, and John, the last days, I wonder what Joel will call our day, the last of the last days. <laughs> we are at the tail end of the last days, and God is still pouring out his spirit. So in Acts chapter 2, from verse 17, when you read from the Passion Translation, Peter told the people gathered together who were wondering what was going on with them. Maybe what was wrong or what was right with them, if I could put it that way. Because they saw that these guys were misbehaving. The Holy Ghost was poured out on them. They were speaking strange languages, doing strange stuff, and people had to conclude that they were drunk. And Peter was like, guys, this is just like 9 a.m. How do you think we will be drunk <laughs> this early in the morning? He said, this was that that was spoken. So Peter took them to the prophetic and said, look, guys, you are missing out on something, which is that you couldn't draw the line between what was spoken by Joel and what's happening here right now. So in verse 16, Peter said, this was that that was spoken. Yeah. Uh, this, he said, this is the fulfillment of what was prophesied to the prophet Joel. And King James said, that that was spoken. For somebody, what was spoken? will come to pass in your life this season. Yeah. You know, for somebody you have been holding on to a particular word, I want to announce to you as we kick off Accelerate 2023, the, you are entering into a season of fulfillment of prophecies. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus. Yeah. And speakers upon speakers will confirm to you that you are entering into your season. Yeah. And somebody, you are going to get fresh prophecies. Yeah. <laughs> New prophecies. But Peter said, this is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. 
said, this is what, verse 17, he said, this is, uh, this is what I will do in the last days. I will pour out of my spirit on everybody and cause your sons and daughters to prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will experience dreams from God. This, this is the prophecy. And we are in the days of fulfillment of prophecies. There's an unusual age that was prophesied here, which is that at the heart point of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will give you and I a particular unusual age, which is the unusual age of visions and dreams. So if somebody has been struggling to understand the context of the unusual age, skyborn, is that there are certain things, exclusive preserves of God's people, an unusual age that you and I must understand and key into to gain an edge. There's an edge that's already been prepared for us. You and I know that, like God, some of us have all kinds of people around us, but you don't treat everybody the same. Yeah. Everybody is important. But in the context of each person, they are not important equally. How do I mean? Many of you today, for instance, if you check your phone, if you're a busy person, you'll have seen so many missed calls today, but you have picked a few. What made the difference between the ones you picked and the ones you did not pick? What made the difference? It meant that simply, all fingers are equal. <laughs> eh? Eh? Not all fingers are equal. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it meant specifically that in the context of your life, some people are more important than some people. Now, think about God, your father. In the context of God, in the realm of God, not, you know, the Bible says God does not have favorites. But, <laughs> but in every nation, everyone <laughs> who seeks him, who comes into a covenant with him, who comes into an alignment with him, who obeys his word, who understands his timing and his season in your life, obviously, you're going to enjoy certain unusual edge. <laughs> Are you still with me tonight? Um, one of such unusual edge is what I want to talk about tonight, and that's the capacity for vision. The capacity for vision. I'm fully persuaded that Accelerate 2023, somebody's heart is about to break loose. Yeah. Whatever has covered you and hindered your capacity for vision is going to be blown away. Yeah. Or somebody say a better amen. Yeah. Now, there are five questions that are very important in life. Yeah, five questions that are very important. In life. Guys, I hope you have my, my slides. Five questions that are very important in life. And if you have answers to these questions, something different will happen in your life. One is, who am I? Who am I? It's a question of identity. Yeah, it's a question of identity. Who am I? It's a question of identity. My image, where do I come from? As in, uh, 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 the, the second question is, where do I come from? But if we stay with, who am I? First John 5, 4 says, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Who am I? I'm a child of God. I'm born of God. Born of God. How many people are born of God here? Can I see a show of mine? Scripture says if you are born of God, you have, you have an unusual edge. And that is that you're going to overcome. Or you have overcome. Oh, I'm not hearing your amen. Yeah. Where am I from? It's another question. Quickly. I need to move quickly. Where am I from? It's a question of heritage. Heritage. And I love First John for 4, especially from the message translation. If you read it from message translation, it said you are of God and you are from God. <laughs> yeah. So my dear children, he said, you, you come from God and you belong to God. 
we have already won a big victory over those false teachers for the spirit in you is far stronger than anything in the world. The spirit in you is far stronger. So there's a question of who am I, where am I from, and quickly, the third question is, why am I here? It's a question of purpose. Yeah, it's a question of purpose. And as you start to walk in divine purpose and take delivery of purpose, one thing that will happen, Romans 8 and 28, for we know all things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Look at verse 29, 29 of, 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 of Romans 8, for whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Uh, God, God has a purpose for your life. And then there's also a predestination. You know, in Jeremiah 1 and verse 5, it said, before I formed you, I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So, that, that, those are four questions there. Uh, who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? The fourth question is, what can I do? It's a question of potential. Potential. And potential speaks to untapped ability. What you can do that you are yet to do. Somebody at Accelerate 2023, I want to prophesy to your potentials that whatever is capping your potential shall be removed. Yeah. I said whatever is capping your potential shall be removed yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. Too many people in our world today coming to church you know, doing everything right, yet with idle capacity. And you are at this conference to be aware that the Holy Ghost will open your eyes to understand that there are capacities you must not take back to heaven. They don't need such things in heaven, they need them here. So you need to understand that, that there's a question of what can I do? What can I do? Somebody listen to me right now. I don't know whether you are here or online or in London, UK, or wherever you are in the world. You are waiting too long for too long. Uh, there's, there's idle capacity that God wants to fire in your life and get you to your next level. And that's what we talk about when we talk about acceleration. You are carrying so much to the point that it's almost weighing you down. And life is passing you by. It's time for you to fire your potentials. Yeah. You know, like a car, like we've been using cars as an analogy for accelerate. You know, one of the most frustrating things that you can do to a car, for instance, is to be driving a sport car on a road with speed limit of 20, 20 kilometers per hour. You could have well just go with a motorbike or a motorcycle. Not even a motorbike, a motorcycle. You understand? Because how can you stay and be doing, mm, 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 you know? On a, <laughs> because that's the picture of how some people's life is. You are, you are too loaded and you're on this side lane of destiny. The highway is calling you. Are you still with me tonight? The highway is calling you. You can't remain on the service lane of destiny. With all these potentials, you need to be able to answer the question, what can I do? It's a question of potential, on top ability, what you can be that you are yet to attempt. Ephesians 2 and verse 10 said, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works. We are loaded with capacity. And I'm trusting God that at Accelerate 2023, your capacity will be unleashed. Yeah. God will open your eyes to see something else about yourself. Yeah. Somebody, you will sleep and see something new about yourself. Yeah. Somebody, you will dream of yourself doing something that you have not done before. Yeah. And it will open you up to a new side of you. Yeah. Oh, I cannot hear your amen. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. And the last question is, 
Where am I going? And that's the question I want to stay with. The first four questions are just like appetizers. Some of our speakers will speak around it here and there. Maybe at my next session, I may also speak around. But the question for tonight is a question of where am I going? It's a question of destiny or vision. Yeah. Where am I going? What is ahead? You know why this last question is the most important? Is that it can awaken the rest. Yeah. Because when God gives you a vision, the vision is calling your potentials. Yeah. Some people here, somebody here, God is going to give you a fresh vision for a business. Amen. Through that business, you will realize that you are very perceptive. You will realize, for instance, that you can manage your relationships. And you have been telling yourself, I don't like people. I don't like, I don't, I don't do that. I don't, you know. When that business starts, you see how you'll be smiling at people. Yeah. You see how you'll be warm at people. Because it's inside you. You need a vision to draw it out. That's why vision can be an unusual edge in life. It's one of the most powerful, unusual edge that anyone can have. Our work with Jesus is meant to birth new vision and dreams in our heart. Anything short of that is not a work with the Holy Spirit. Because one of the major functions of the Holy Spirit in these last days is that when it comes upon you, it's going to activate your capacity for vision, capacity for dreams. When we look through the scriptures, you see the story of Abraham, for instance. Abraham was able to see what God was doing. The vision gave him an unusual edge. Because in Genesis 15, somebody like Abraham may be here tonight. Abraham was frustrated in Genesis 15. Abraham was like a guy who came to Accelerate Conference complaining. Genesis 15 from verse 1. You can imagine somebody in the presence of God and all he had was a complaint. The Bible says in verse 1 of Genesis 15, and after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying, do not be afraid, Abraham. I'm your shield. Your exceeding great reward. But Abraham said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing that I go childless? <laughs> seeing that I go childless. And the hair of my house is Elias of Damascus. I think God did not know. See, when, God, when people are telling God things that are apparent, you know it's frustration. <laughs> it's frustration because God is all-knowing. Yeah. All God is, wants from you is to ask for something or cooperate. But the moment somebody is saying, eh, you know my husband, you know he's a coconut head, God knows. <laughs> God already knows. You see, there's nothing that's going on around you that God is not aware. You know my boss, that my boss is a difficult person. I don't even know whether I'll be promoted in the next five years. God knows your boss. But he's, he's not expecting you to come and be telling him what he already knows. He wants you to tell him what you want. In alignment with the vision that is putting in your heart. And God listened to Abraham with all those things. Next verse. All those things that Abraham was saying. Look at what God said in verse 3. Then Abraham said, Look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my own house is my hair. Not all these ones that I'm just uh, putting together. Verse 4. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him saying, This one shall not be your hair, but one who will come from your own body shall be your head. God said, look, I still have a plan. You, you still have potentials. I'm just going to give you a sense of vision. When we had that sense of vision to it, knowing that you are from me, you are, you, are, you, know, you are connected to me, something is going to spark up. And verse 5, then God brought him outside and said, look now towards heavens. Count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. You see this verse 5? This verse 5? This verse 5 is prophetic for somebody here. Amen. You are entering into a season where God will start to show you things that are unbelievable. Amen. I can't get your amen to that. Amen. I said you are entering into a season when God will start to show you things that are summarily unbelievable. Amen. I mean, what God told Abraham in verse 5 of Genesis 15 was supposed to be unbelievable to him. 
This guy had been trying to conceive for many years, over 25 years. And then God said, look at the stars. Your children are going to be more than this. Oh, come on, God. We're just asking for one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was all this? I, I know your mouth is sweet, but it's okay. just give me one. Yeah. But you know what God was showing Abraham? It's now a reality because all of us, <laughs> all of us here today, uh, all of us here today, all right, we are all children of Abraham. Because the Bible says that <laughs> if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Yes, according to the covenant. Everyone, billions of people who profess the name of Jesus today around the world, God was showing Abraham when he showed that star. Yeah. You were in that star that God was showing Abraham. Because if you are in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. That's what the scripture says. In Galatians, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. Glory be to Jesus. In the same vein, God spoke to Jacob. Let me take that very quickly. Genesis 46, when you again read from verse 1 to 5 of Genesis 46, God, in like manner, this was what happened. After all the deprivation that Jacob suffered, there was a famine, just like the famine going on around the world right now. God had positioned Joseph in Egypt. And you know Joseph is a prototype of Christ in the New Testament. Somebody who prepares a place for you. The provision had been made in Egypt. Jacob was dilly darling. Should we go to Egypt or not? Pharaoh sent a chariot to him, to his family. I mean, where, and he said, move all of them to Egypt. Because Joseph had made a provision, uh, Goshen, for them. The Bible says that Jacob left, but he was still, you know, not decided. Until they got to Beersheba. And then Jacob decided they're going to pass the night. Look at. Uh, uh, Verse 1, so Israel took his journey, Genesis 46 and verse 1, with all that he had and came to Beersheba and offered sacrifices to God of his fathers, Isaac. Then God spoke to Israel in the, in the vision of the night. Somebody, God will start to speak to you in the vision of the night. Yeah. Visions and dreams will no longer be lacking in your life. Yeah. You will no longer lack divine direction. Yeah. Everyone at the crossroad, wherever you are in the world, connected to this service, I, 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 by the power of God available here at Accelerate 2023, you are leaving your crossroad. Yeah. My God will give you precinct direction, yeah. accurate direction, yeah. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says here that God spoke to Israel in the vision of the night and said, Jacob, Jacob, and he said, here I am. So he said, I am God, the God of your father. He said, do not fear to go down to Egypt. I will make of you a great nation there. I will go down with you to Egypt. I will also surely bring you up again. And Joseph will put his hand on your eyes. Then Jacob arose from Beersheba. And the sons of Israel carried their father Jacob, their little ones, and their wives in the cart which Pharaoh had sent to carry him. Jacob was not willing to go to meet Pharaoh until God spoke to him. He was in the middle of the road. That's why I know that somebody here, you know, I said, I told, I told you that this is going to be prophetic for some people. Somebody in the crossroad, God is moving you from that crossroad and yeah. moving you on the straight path. The vision of God for your life will become so clear. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, let's quickly talk about, because I'm going to end this with us praying, you know, a little bit, charging this place, because I see that the Holy Spirit coming upon some people here. The power of vision will come upon you like never before. Amen. Let's talk about the power of vision. Proverbs 29 and verse 18. A very important scripture there. I mean, we have looked at the life of Abraham, life of, ja life of Jacob and all. But in Proverbs 29 and verse 18, he said, where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraints. But happy is he who keeps the law. The N NLT, give me NLT, New Living Translation. It says, uh, New Living Translation, quickly. It says, where, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Mm. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. Somebody here, 
This is your season where you start to accept divine guidance. Vision, ladies and gentlemen, is powerful. It reshapes your destiny. It dictates your pathway in life. A clear vision disciplines your dreams, your desires, and your actions. That's what it does. Somebody is coming out of Accelerate 2023 with a more disciplined life. Amen. With a more streamlined activity Amen. list. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, what God told me is that the, the, this unusual edge of vision requires serious management. The reason why many believers are not enjoying the unusual edge of consistent vision and revelation is because we are not allowing the vision to discipline us or to put us within certain boundaries. Without vision, there's no regulation of, for desire. You live a lousy life. There are many things I love to do, but I cannot do because the vision that God has given me constrains me. Paul, writing in 1 Corinthians, uh, uh, I can't leave my hands on the scripture now, where he said, uh, all things are lawful. All things are permissible for me, but not all things are expedient or profitable. That is something coming from a man of vision. A person of vision knows that I can do anything I like, but I will not do everything. I mean, look, look at that. He said, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. That is a person of vision. What determines what is helpful or lawful? The vision. Many people are living life anyhow, yet you claim to have a vision that you want to fulfill. Vision is one of the most powerful forces on earth. That's why you must not live accelerate 2023 without a stronger desire for a sense of vision. Because it, it, it has a transforming power. It can change your trajectory in life. It can change everything. Vision is the key to the future and is a critical hope factor. When vision is out, hope is out. I drive around this city Many other cities of the world, seeing people. Even when I was, you know, when we're driving down to church today in traffic, I saw a seemingly, you know, older guy, elderly guy, selling in traffic. In my mind, I felt this must be a demonic attack. I'm telling you, that's how I felt. Because the man looked like somebody who should be able to gain a sense of vision enough not to be selling. I look at everything the man was selling. If you had it together, it may not be up to 5,000 naira or 2,000. Tall man, you know, and all the hours, like, in my head, I calculated the different things that this man can do. If only he would get a sense of vision. You know some people staying in a training for six months <laughs> as from a sense of vision can transform your life altogether, but they choose to do subsistent things because of lack of vision. I'm speaking to somebody here, somebody online. You have been on a subsistent living for too long. It's time for you to be skyborn. But that experience will come as an encounter with the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Spirit will tell you, drop everything. This is what is next. It may mean for months you're going to be maybe learning something or staying with somebody, understanding something, and there may not be money coming from it. But it's going to change your life completely. Yeah. Somebody who received that say, believe in amen. amen. Vision is the key to the future. And it's a critical hope factor. Vision also inspires clarity of intention. 
that propels the human spirit. Many spirits are dormant because there's no vision like the fire that will fire it up. Yeah. So vision is past clarity of intention. It propels the human spirit. That's what it does. It's an internalized mental picture of a preferable future. See, when you have internalized a mental picture of a preferable future, it drives you like a drunkard. Yeah. It, it, it guides what you're going to do and what you're, what you're going to say. So your yes and your no will no longer be cheap if you're vision-driven. Because it's based on your vision. Nothing more, nothing less. It's your vision that determines your yes and your no. Some people, your yes is too cheap. Everybody can get a yes from you. Everybody. Everybody gets your yes. You can't live like that anymore. Not after this conference. Your yes should not be cheap. Your yes must be guided by a sense of clarity of intention. There are some places you must not find you. This one that anybody can place a demand on you and you show up. You are not a man of vision. Yeah. Because where you show up must be determined, I mean, is determined by where you are going. Don't forget the question of destiny and vision is about where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? Vision will drive you to create a plan. When we bought this land, for instance, this Africa Center, you know, uh, um, the Lekki Center, when we bought this land, we had to get architects. I put a team together, engineers, architects, our building committee, do a layout for this place. Even this tent that was supposed to be a prefab stuff, you know, this structure, we still had to create a plan. Yeah. You see, so, you see, the way it works in real life is that vision is first within and then without. First within, a mental picture. Then it has to be captured in a plan. Anything that will not be a coffin that people will live inside must have a drawing. <laughs> I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. Yeah. If you ever, if you bought a house and you ask for the building plan, say it does not exist, don't pay. <laughs> because you are not sure whether the house will not collapse on you. And every builder knows that you have to supply, I mean, the, the plan must be sent for approval. And it's after the plan has been approved that you start construction. Many people in life want to construct things that does not have a plan. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> so you have many Christians who are praying for things to be constructed, destiny constructed, which destiny? Where's the destination? Where are we going? Where is the blueprint? Yeah, where is the blueprint? You may say we know in part, we prophesy in part, yes, but where is the part? <laughs> you know, because Apostle Paul said we know in part. He, just, he didn't say we don't know at all. We know in part. <laughs> we know a little here, a little there. What do you know now? I've come to announce to somebody at Asheret 2023, what you know must increase. Yeah. I said what you know about your destiny must increase. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Glory be to Jesus. Vision makes life simple and grants discretion and discernment. Grants discretion and discernment. Now, as I you know, start to attempt to wrap this up, I needed to understand something. And this is very important because when it came to me, it came very strong. Very strong. I had to stand up <laughs> and walk around well, because this one hits me below the belt. And this is it. The weapons, the, the, you know, the weapons of, of Satan are not only to get you to do bad things. Because some people think if they want to attack you, he attacks you with bad things. It's not to do bad things only. They are also targeted to get you involved in good things that are not right for you to do. Yeah. There are many people doing things 
that are not in the blueprint of God for your life. They are good, but they are not for you. Because when you start to capture your unusual edge of vision, it narrows your life down. It narrows your life down. Many people are not getting to destination because of the way they are traveling. Like this, like this, like that. <laughs> now, imagine, just, just bear with me for a moment. I have just, you know, a few more minutes. Bear with me for a moment. If you travel like this, like this, like that, on Tommy Land Bridge, <laughs> what's going to happen? <laughs> that explains why some people have been getting grounded consistently. Are you still with me tonight? Yeah. I've come to announce to somebody with this opening teaching of Acceleration 2023 that my God will start to hold you Hold you close to his heart, you will no longer facilitate on issues of destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I say you will no longer facilitate on issues of destiny. My God will hold you close to his chest. You will hear his voice. He will guide you. He will direct you. In the name of Jesus, no more destiny accidents. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said, no more destiny accident. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. So somebody hear me and hear me well. You are not born to do everything. God only wants you to become better in the things that he has coded into your destiny. Yeah. You know when you see a cat trying to become a fish. That's the beginning of his death sentence. Because he will attempt to swim like a fish. And then he will meet his waterloo. And that's how some people have been living. Your unusual edge is your sense of personal vision. And God has poured out his spirit this season. And is pouring out his spirit at this conference this year. To the hand that you gain on cunning clarity that will position you for what is ahead of you. When you get this and you get it well, you will stop on healthy comparison. You will, envy will be destroyed in your life. You will be able to face your front and move with speed. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. I said that will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. So dominion requires mastery. You know, there's, there's a dominion calling upon our lives. And you are born to master something. Because you can't have dominion, literally speaking, you know, in every area. There's a, a, an area of your dominion that God wants to show you and lead you into it. And I see God doing it in this conference. I said, I see God doing it in this conference. Amen. I want you to stand on your feet, everyone. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Glory to Jesus. Lift your two hands to Jesus. Lift your two hands to Jesus. God is answering questions at Accelerate 2023. God is answering questions here. God is answering questions here. I don't know what question is on your mind right now. The Holy Ghost is here. The Holy Ghost is here. Don't pray traditional prayers. Don't just say Jesus will be glorified. He's already glorified. Yes. What question is in your heart for the Lord? Because the Holy Spirit is still answering questions. If you have any question in your heart tonight, I want you to lift your voice. Let's start from there. Just two or three prayer points. Because uh, we need to move to the second word session tonight. But two minutes, lift your hands to Jesus. Ask the Holy Ghost questions. Let's make it practical. Ask the Holy Spirit questions. Because He's going to answer the questions in your heart. Everyone online at the different centers, open your mouth. <laughs> Don't pray religious prayers. <laughs> Ask God questions. 
Say, Father, I need an answer to this. Speak to me at this conference. Speak to me in my dream. Speak to me with a vision. Speak to me by the power of the Holy Ghost. Speak to me as I study the word, your word. But these are the questions that I need answers to this evening. Somebody is asking destiny questions, vision questions, capacity questions, potential questions, calling questions. Therein lies your unusual edge. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Yes. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. I see a fresh outpouring of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. two hands with me everyone pray in the Holy Ghost for one minute pray in the Holy Ghost I see an outpouring upon you pray in understanding pray in the Holy Ghost say Father I receive a fresh outpouring I receive a fresh outpouring let accelerate 2023 not leave me the same I want to see you I want answers to questions I want to step into a new level of visions and revelation I want to enjoy the fullness of your spirit. Everyone online, everyone at the different centers, open your mouth right now and pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost, pray in understanding. Asking him to flood your heart with light. I want to see you, Jesus. I want to know your ways. Fresh vision, fresh dreams. Let every covering be removed. Let something break out in my life. I don't want to be the same again. I don't want to be the same again. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you glory and we give you praise. In the precious name of Jesus. Lift your right hand with me, everyone. And so, everlasting Father, Thank you. Say it with conviction. Say thank you. For your power that is at work in my life. Say from this moment. I step into revelation. I step into a new level of vision. Say my heart is open. To receive from you. Make this my conference. Make this my season. Make this my time. I desire unusual encounters. In the name of Jesus. Somebody put your hands together, celebrate Jesus. Celebrate 2023. It's your season of vision, of dreams, of revelation, knowledge. You'll never be the same again in the name of Jesus Christ.
Come on, somebody, greet it in Uganda. 